moved into a 4x4 four four. in Costa Rica! why we didn't go straight back to the US after we finished our van trip through Europe. Currently, Louis can't get back into America without spending two weeks outside of Europe first. So we thought this was the perfect opportunity to come to Costa Rica, look at our land, see the progress at Alegria, which is the eco village we're buying in, mm -hmm. and have a bit of an adventure in a 4x4. And hopefully book our wedding venue. So for the next week, this is gonna be our house. I'll show you around. So first of all, we'll give you a little tent tour. So this is a four person tent. You can get this rental for a family or if you're traveling with friends. This is the side that we've been sleeping on and then on this side we've just been keeping some of our things, our like laptops and passports and stuff just to have them up here while we're sleeping. We have some blankets and all of these windows open up. We had them all open last night and you could see the beach and we could see a lightning storm and it was epic. So it's actually rainy season in Costa Rica right now and we haven't visited in rainy season before and the rain is pretty mental. The first night we tried to sleep in the rooftop tent, it was just torrential, torrential rain. I didn't even get to film any of it, but we kind of threw the tent up. I didn't put all of these like support bars in because I just didn't have time and it was leaking and it was pretty miserable. It kind of felt like a sauna in there. Last night, however, was way better. We found a better spot, there was a sea breeze. It did start raining again, but thankfully we'd already set up and we were snuggled up in bed. And these windows that open up let so much cool air flow through, so it was lovely. I haven't really driven a 4x4 much. This is a Toyota Land Cruiser. I think these are apparently the best 4x4s in the world. People debate it. Uh, I think it's an ongoing debate, but uh, I've loved it so far. We haven't taken it through any big river crossings yet but this is what this snorkel's for. But we are gonna be putting this to the test over the next week. We're gonna find some off-road trails and have a real adventure. So I'm gonna show you the kit that we've got with this car. All right, this is the cool box, which we're about to go and fill. We're gonna go for a little supermarket run to get some lunch. We have a fold-up tables and chairs set, which we'll also use momentarily. We've got all our cutlery. This is a coffee maker. We have a spade. Hopefully we won't be using this to try and dig ourselves out. These are the camping stoves. So it's not got a built-in, it's not like our camper van where we had like a built-in kitchen and stuff. This is a bit more rustic. All the necessities. This is my, uh, my necessity. <laughs> we definitely lucked out with this spot. We are literally beachside. Oh, just falling asleep to the sound of rain on the tent and the ocean waves in front. Nothing beats it. So we've obviously slept in a lot of vehicles recently and we can tell you our pros and cons of one of these setups later on, but so far we're enjoying it. So a three minute walk from our car is this co-working space at, I think this is a hostel or hotel called Selena. And this has been a lifesaver for us last couple days because you can pay for a daily pass in the co-working space. It's $10 per person. You get a free breakfast pass and you get use of the co-working space from 6 a.m. till 9 p.m. There's air conditioning, there's bathrooms, which we're about to pop in to go to the bathroom now. Very fast Wi-Fi. Very fast Wi-Fi, we just uploaded a video this morning. And there's showers in the bathrooms. I don't think we mentioned where in Costa Rica we are. We're actually in Santa Teresa, which is this really fun little beach town, like surfing town. And the food here is incredible. The restaurants and the supermarkets. So we're gonna go in and stock up. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, it goes all the way up. This is very different from the town that we're yeah. living near, isn't it? You couldn't find anything, right? No. There, yeah, there was no plant milk at all in the grocery stores near our town. And this is how much plant milk there is. <laughs> this is something I love about Costa Rica. We're constantly just finding new random fruit we've never seen before. Like, guys, what is this? It's unreal.
in the tropics near the equator, the sun sets a lot earlier than if you're like far from the equator. Science. And uh, the sun is setting at like 5.30 here right now and pretty much all year. So we've only got like an hour of sunlight. It's quite late in the afternoon already. So this is more like dinner than lunch. So we're actually setting up under the outcrop for the tent. On the other side, there is a bigger awning, but this way we can like look out at the sea and we can cook this side. So I don't want to get the awning out right now. Stop what you're doing right now. <laughs> so many dogs in Costa Rica, and when we move here, I feel like we're going to adopt all the street dogs. We're going to have so many. We need to set a limit. Yeah. yeah. How many dogs do you think we should have? 100? Let's start with two. Let's see how that goes. Hey. hey, kitty. Don't go under there. Come on. <laughs> On tonight's menu we have veggie tacos. I'm cooking up some onion with pepper. I've got some refried black beans, corn, this quinoa veggie blend, spices, avocado. And this is where I'm gonna cook the quinoa blend. And then I've got some tortillas there, some chips. This one. Thankfully, we got other ones. Here we go. Okay, ready? Okay, let's try that again. Nice. Woo! That's a good uh, pit to fruit ratio. I'm glad the rain hasn't kicked in yet. Basically, all of the weather apps are completely inaccurate. They just kind of guess when it might start raining, but it's basically said it's going to be maybe raining all day. Uh, but once the rain does kick in, that pretty much shuts us down. I don't think we can do a lot. We can eat under here and then just chill in the tent. We have lowered the table and dinner is ready. All right, my first taco is ready. So we have refried beans. Peppers and onions. Peppers and onions. Corn. Corn and rice and quinoa and avocado. Yummy. It's time for my first taco. We are in the tent for the night. Amazingly, it hasn't started raining yet. It might not even rain tonight, who knows, but it also could like be a torrential thunderstorm in an hour, so. We're nice and cozy. We are about to snuggle up. It's still a little bit damp. Yeah. But that could just be rainy season. Yeah, I think it's like 95% humidity at all times. Yeah. And we're by the beach, obviously, so yeah, just part of it. And then we've got the raging sea as well. Yeah. It's just been mental waves since we got here, so that's uh, a nice calming sound to fall asleep to. And yeah, I guess we'll see you guys in the morning. Bye. Bye. Good morning. Today is a glorious day. Amazingly, it didn't rain last night slept well. There is however a power cut in the town so we wandered over to where we normally get some breakfast and stuff and no one's making anything, the coffee machines aren't working so thankfully we have our own breakfast here and I've got a little cafetiere, french press, some coffee so I'm gonna make some coffee, we're gonna have some granola and fruit and uh, yeah Maybe have a shower. Ah! 
okay? Yeah. <laughs> the iguana started pooping on our car. Here we go. Some big iguana poops. We've been parked up here like three days now and we are gonna pack up and we are heading to go and check out a potential venue for our wedding next year, which we're super excited about. But before we do, I'm gonna have a quick shower, show you how that works, and we're gonna show you how we pack up the car before hitting the road. I've connected the hose on here. I need to turn this to allow air to come in, and this one, and then this should... Look, we have, we have water. This is where our water is, by the way, in this tube up here. All right. Oh, let's cut to us filling up. I'll show you how we filled this up. I've connected to a hose. This is filling up our water tank pipe. And this is how you know it's full. <laughs> this is our makeshift shower situation. Thankfully, the door covers exactly what Louis needs covered. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually very refreshing. So, first up, I've just taken everything out, put it in the car, closed up all the windows. I'm just gonna leave the sheets on here because I don't think they'll be an issue. I'm gonna close these windows and then put it away. Time to pack down. So the car won't start, I think we drained the battery because we had the lights on last night. So we're gonna go and try and find someone to help jump start the car. Thankfully, I found some jumper cables, but I've been patiently waiting here for another car to show up to see if they'll help. And we have to be somewhere in 45 minutes to go and check out this potential wedding venue. So we've been panicking a little bit. Thankfully, Raya, who's at the youth hostel right now, just messaged me to say that she found someone He's going to drive down here, jumpstart the car and save the day. So I'm waiting now. I think they'll show up momentarily, but I'm pretty relieved. Ah, uh, result. Uh, rented it from Nomad America. Uh, thanks, Xander. We are on our way to catch the ferry back to the mainland because we're on the peninsula right, right now. And Google Maps has directed us through a river. We've just arrived, so I've just gone into 4x4 mode. Ooh. 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 Okay, so I can see the road the other side. Shall I go into full 4x4 mode? We just don't know how deep it is and I, and I don't think it's a good idea. Let's do it. You ready? Check it out! Check it out! Oh, that was epic! We haven't really told you what's going on. I think last time we talked, we told you that we are going to go see our wedding venue, potentially. Basically, we visited the venue and we kind of love it. So we decided to stay there for a couple nights. We booked a room just to kind of really get a feel for what it's like to stay there and be there and have breakfast, everything about it. We walked the land a few times and kind of made plans for where we might do things. So but we want to save all of that for another video. So yeah. we've, we shot a bunch of stuff. We took loads of photos and videos, but we're gonna do like a whole wedding planning video at some point. Yeah, so now we are back at the ferry and we're gonna cross back to the, the mainland of Costa Rica and we have a lot more adventures coming up. Thankfully, we've already checked in. We're not gonna have issues like we did in Italy last month. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to get back 
onto the mainland and we're going to start exploring parts of Costa Rica we haven't been to before because we've already visited Santa Teresa. It's a beautiful place, but I'm excited to go and visit the cloud forest. We vlogged yesterday, but I think we have to make a whole separate video from what happened because... It was crazy. It was crazy. I think it was one of the craziest travel days we've ever had. Like, <laughs> remember the ferry video we made? Well, this blew that completely out of the water. <sighs> anyway, you'll, you'll see that in the next video. So it's the next day. It's our last full day here, and we just arrived at a medical center to take our COVID test because we're flying tomorrow. So, yeah, that's what we're doing first. Let's do it. So we got our tests done. We have to wait about five hours and we'll get them emailed to us. In the meantime, we're going to stop here at this little cafe in town. Okay, lunch has arrived. Mm -hmm. What did you get? The green something sandwich. We were just saying that we've been missing like dark green. So yeah. we got big green smoothies and just sandwiches with lots of yummy fresh greens. Mm, and I got a quinoa burger and a side of roast potatoes and also a green smoothie. Cheers. Alright, heading off to some waterfalls. Let's do it! some sheep to cross. Um, we are here looking for a waterfall. Hola. <laughs> I just said hi. Come on up. And um, we... we I, don't think, I don't think we're going to find the waterfall to hike to. I got yeah. some shots on the drone, but I don't think we're going to get there before it gets dark. Yeah, but we did find someone who maybe looks like a guide or something, who um, we parked in one place and he was like, oh, there's a much better place. So he's on the back of the car right now. I guess he's going to show us. Yeah, he's going to move oh. this thing in the road for us. Oh, yeah. Where are we? I don't know, we're in some theme park. <laughs> Dino land? There's oh, randomly dinosaurs around. This is so crazy. Is this yeah. even designed for cars? I don't know. <laughs> I where it. is he taking us? I don't know. I have no idea where we are right now. <laughs> All I know is we're definitely bringing our kids here. We have kids. <laughs> yeah. look, look at the size of them. I like know. size dinosaurs. That's wild. Oh, That's Kai would love this. So we need to bring gosh. her. So unfortunately we didn't find the waterfall. Mm. I can see the river down there, but I think the waterfall's like way up into the valley. Mm. But thankfully this is only like an hour and a half away from where we're gonna be living. We so. are definitely coming back for yeah, sure. For sure. And if I'd advise if you come, come earlier in the day because mm. then you have time to hike up and you're not rushing to beat the light. I think that's an ongoing thing in Costa Rica. Yeah. And the, and this belt of the world is like because the sun sets early, maybe start earlier in the day. And we talked to someone that said they don't actually let you start the hike to the waterfall after 3 p.m. So yeah, definitely make sure you come, maybe even like before noon to have as much time as you can. Mm. So anyway, we've both just got our results back from our COVID test this afternoon. We're both mm -hmm. negative. Mm -hmm. We've got our flight booked tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And we thought we'd make the most of our last day just by coming up here, exploring a part of Costa Rica we haven't before. These, this mountainous cloud forest area is amazing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's time we give you a bit of a breakdown and the pros and cons of a 4x4 off-road vehicle with a rooftop tent 
compared to other vehicles we've lived in. We'll start with pros. For me, having driven other vehicles here, this is the best vehicle, the Land Cruiser. I want to get one of these when we move here. So in terms of drivability, getting places, it's unbelievable. So that's my first mm -hmm. pro. And especially, you? I guess with the tent, kind of the whole idea is that you're going to like undiscovered places and places that are hard to get to and then you can just camp at, like in the middle of nowhere. So that's really cool. I think my biggest pro is that you're basically like outside in nature wherever you are so the fact that we slept by the beach we fell asleep to the sound of rain hitting the tent and to the waves every night which if you're enclosed like with the in the van with all the doors closed and windows closed you just don't it's not the same you can't like hear the waves like that so and there's a nice really sea breeze yeah. coming in through the windows that was yeah, great it was amazing I think a pro as well for me is obviously saving money staying in hostels or hotels I think it basically adds up. So I think either having a rooftop tent or an off-road camper van can save you money. Last time we came to Costa Rica, we didn't rent a car or anything. We just kind of paid for like a shuttle from one place to another and then just in that one place didn't have a car. And that was a cool way to travel, but I would say a place like Costa Rica, I'd so highly recommend mm. getting a car. And the fact that obviously we didn't have any hotels booked or anything, that we were able to just kind of decide on the fly where we wanted to go, that like that freedom that is the beauty of living in a vehicle and that's why we love van life and bus life and all, all of it so a place like costa rica i just we got to see it in such a cool way this time having this like epic vehicle that yeah. could take us anywhere and that we could just decide in the morning where we wanted to go yeah and literally because this is one of the most capable off-roading vehicles i didn't have to hesitate to think oh should we go that route should we go that route obviously there's the video that's coming <laughs> next which is going to show the extreme side of rainy season off-roading mm -hmm. uh, i'm not going to say anymore but yeah i think it's been a really fun couple of weeks okay now for our cons comparing this to sleeping in a van or, um, a, or a school bus or a school bus i mean the school bus is so luxury i can't even imagine like when we go back there it's going to feel like a whole mansion but comparing this to a van specifically um I didn't feel as safe because obviously you're more exposed, you're not like locked inside a car. And it's just harder to be covert because obviously you're opening a tent on top. So if you're in a bit more of an urban area like we were in Santa Teresa, um, it's just very obvious that you're sleeping inside versus if you have a van that has blacked out windows, then you almost like can't tell. Especially with the ambulance that we had in Europe. Yeah. You really couldn't tell that we were inside. And it's not like people care necessarily, but yeah, like you said, it's people might still come over and the ladders don't retract back up again, so. Maybe if you were like a solo, I mean, our friend Ava is like killing it doing this, but I think if I was alone, I would just be a bit nervous about that personally. Mm, yeah, you'd want to park really far out onto nature where you wouldn't yeah. worry about random people kind of breaking in. Mm. Um, I think as well, if you're gonna do this, I'd recommend doing it in the dry season. The rain makes it more difficult. The first night we parked up, which I didn't even film, it was torrential rain when we arrived where we were gonna park mm -hmm. and it didn't go down too well. Trying to put up the tent in the rain, I got soaked through. Um, I didn't manage to get it quite right, so the tent leaked a little bit. So yeah, I'd say either doing it in the dry season or if you're gonna do it in the wet season, just plan ahead arrive to your location a bit early before the sun sets, hopefully when it's dry like this to put up the tent. Yeah, most of the days in Costa Rica during rainy season is dry during the day and then starts raining in the late afternoon. So yeah. if you can get somewhere and put up your tent even in the morning or by lunchtime, and especially if you're not moving for a few days, I think that's kind of ideal. As long, once the tent is up, like when we were on the beach, once the tent was up, we were fine for days. That was perfect. Mm. Um, but I think if you were moving really quickly and wanting to set up almost every day, you definitely have to keep that in mind if it's rainy season. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I think another con for me, and this is more comparing it to like van life, is having to set up a lot of stuff. Like mm. having to, you know, put the tent up, which takes a while, and then getting all the bedding sorted out, making the bed. And then even when we want to cook, like having to get everything out of the boxes, set up the table, set up the chairs, set up the cooker. I feel like having been spoiled yeah. with a van and a bus that has that all ready to go, you don't have to do any set up or set down. Mm -hmm. um, it's made me wonder, is there a, like an in-between where you can get like a an off-roading mm. van? I don't know whether the, whether it would be as capable as a Land Cruiser. Um, I almost think there's enough space back there to create some kind of van life inside the car situation. Yeah. And I think that's probably what we would 
look at doing when we move here if we get a vehicle like this. Yeah. So stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. yeah, we'll see. Overall, it's been a really, really fun experience because neither of us have done an adventure like this, stayed in a rooftop tent. Mm -hmm. uh, I highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. And just, just set your expectations that it's going to be a little bit more rustic than yeah, staying it's, it's in a, a camper van. It's an adventure. It's yeah, a proper true adventure. adventure. So if you are like on that mindset, I'm here, I'm ready for an epic adventure, this is definitely a cool way to go. I just realized we haven't actually shown you guys us setting the tent up. So I've got time lapse running. But once you've got it down like this, unzipped it, thrown it back, you have to just secure this ladder. So both these ladders have like different ways they clip, clip in, but there you go. So that's, okay, it's too high. Right. <laughs> Fill it level. It's a little bit fiddly. So basically you can get it level no matter like which way you park, even if yeah. it's not level ground. There you go. And then once that ladder's secure, uh, you can climb up, get into the tent and all of that. These are the key things I forgot on the first night. These prop all of the waterproof kind of top part of the tent on. So I'll show you just quickly how to do that. In the frame, there's these little holes, which these jam into. So there you go, that only took us like five minutes. And there's a few other things, there's an awning that pops out and if it gets really windy, you can kind of like secure things down with ropes. Um, and I think, the more you put this up and down, the more experienced and quicker. Yeah, and the first time was a mess. It's a bit tried. fiddly, it is a bit fiddly. <laughs> I hope that you guys like this video. Like I said, make sure to subscribe and wait for the next one. It's gonna be wild. But anyway, we'll see you on the next adventure. Bye. Bye. <laughs>